Welcome back. This is K24 this morning. Looking at the big stories of the day, and of course, one of the biggest things being talked about is public debt and how to move forward on this particular scenario. Senate votes on this particular one later on this afternoon, but it's something we're discussing now to see what might inform that decision moving forward. One of the things and one of the allegations made yesterday from Gatondo South MP Moses Kuria is that Parliament had failed in its oversight role. That's something he talks about. He says, as Parliament, we have failed Kenyans because we sold them the romantic story that all is well. We failed in our oversight role because we could have uh, we could have said no, but we said yes. Selling lies that all was well because we believed in respecting the executive. And most of us are members of the ruling party. We have lied to Kenyans. We are doing badly as an economy. Uh, Honorable Kioni, unfortunately I have to start with you again because mm. uh, you're both in the National Assembly and in the ruling party. Mm. This coming from someone uh, who shares uh, the same uh, position as you. He's actually even in the uh, House Budget Committee as well. Has and Parliament you wonder, you wonder why? failed? One, why would he want to go and sit in the place when he has a rare opportunity to sit on the floor and to push the debate on the floor? Mm -hmm. Two, he sits in a committee and work of parliament is actually, um, you know, for you to be able to move things on the floor, direction is given by the committee. So it's actually his committee that should have shot these things down first. Mm -hmm. And it's always easier to deal with it at the committee level as, uh, as opposed to the floor. So I, I have difficulties even trying to address myself to, uh, in fact, let me be honest, other than you trying to draw me to what he has said, I would not bother. The reason I, that's, bring, this, that's uh, why I, the reason I bring this honorable Kiwan is the Because to me, let me tell you, to me, it, this, it's, it may be accurate, I, and I doubt, mm -hmm. the, because, but he is uh, one person who is very good at making sensational statements um, for purposes of what has happened. But, but Honorable Kioni, he's not the only one who has said this. Because yeah, but why is he not saying it on the floor? Okay, yesterday we also had uh, Two, Honorable Kakuya who said that in terms of this debate, no, no, Honorable no, Kioni no. who I said refuse, that I refuse there was a lot of pressure this. from the executive with mm. regard to this specific um, debt ceiling issue. Mm. Someone else also from um, the ruling party um, saying that there's a lot of undue pressure from the executive to pass this through. You know, Moses uh, Kuria can also move to, to this bad parliament. Mm -hmm. Because he's part of it and he's unhappy with it. Why is he not doing what he should do? You know, you, you cannot, this uh, issue of pretending that you are out there and you are condemning where you belong because it is the going, uh, the thing that it looks like is uh, attractive is unfortunate and I am unable to address what he has said. I, I don't think it is um, useful for me to uh, address myself to what he has said. Let me bounce to uh, Dennis Lumbi on this because um, you are part of that particular discussion as well. Mm -hmm. We've heard it from various uh, quarters uh, from within the National Assembly mm -hmm. that there's a lot of pressure that, mm -hmm. ca that came from the executive mm -hmm. and more so as far as this was concerned and that's why even if they said no, they had to push it through. Absolutely. Um, uh, Honorable Kioni says that um, there are ways to solve this. Where do you stand on this particular issue? Because they're supposed to represent Wanjiko. Mm -hmm. Seems like at the end of the day they are rubber stamp for the mm -hmm. executive. Uh, Honorable Moses Kuria made that statement yesterday in my presence. Uh, we were panelists at a uh, chartered financial analyst uh, meeting. And also Honorable Jude Njomo, the mover of um, uh, the capping uh, bill was there. And I absolutely think that uh, the Honorable was honest in his rebuttal. I mean, first of all, the thing that we can't question is that he's been one of the most blatant and honest defenders of the uh, President Uhuru's regime. And I think it's okay sometimes to admit fault. And in fact, the interesting thing is that he labeled it as treason because he said that everything that has happened that is budget-based has been shrouded in dishonesty and deceit. I hold the same thought. But then it's even as he says that, he's saying this seven years in, Shouldn't he have uh, blown this whistle far much earlier? Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> you no, no, no. sit you know, with the he, hope. He doesn't even sit in the committees. He doesn't show up in committees. And you only see him with, the, in a, <laughs> with him in press conferences. So he's, he's not, not in parliament. I have never <laughs> met Moses Kuria before. <laughs> It was my <laughs> first time. I don't even have his it's number. <laughs> we don't talk. To come and debate you understand? Right. Was we and were just, we were, and not, and not in the committees. And then you, you, know, you know, the truth of the uh, matter is that, you, I mean, mean uh, that's an allegation. We, we don't have the reports whether he attends committees or not. But even, uh, even but, so, but the if fact he was is, there, it would make it worse. Seven years in and you would say The truth now. is, the question that I want to ask <laughs> is that, is our economy in trouble? Mm -hmm. 
the obvious answer will be yes. Yes. The truth of the fact is that it's treasury honest about the books that they're giving us. Because every economist, other than Moses Kuria, ask any economist, call any economist in the country, and ask them, are we in a stagflation? Uh, is inflation high? Is our economy stagnant? They'll tell you yes. Then match that with the admittance of, 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 of Honorable Moses Kuria. Whether you think he's crazy or not, or he's dishonest, the truth of the fact is that if it's flooding outside, and a guy you don't trust tells you it's flooding outside, you'll be a fool to go because to go outside because you, you will drown. Anyoka, let me, the let the me fact bring in is that well, we really he need... Was there, yes. And I'm wondering the fact that um, he says that um, if it's truth, it's truth, or they said now or tomorrow. But if you are there witnessing this so-called <laughs> plundering that was going on and these cutbacks are being given, why are you telling us now when you had a chance to do something about it, according to that particular <laughs> headline? I, I think... Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it's coming out at this point in time. We ought to have known this way early. Like, I mean, there's this saying that goes that uh, if you find a crocodile telling you that the fish is unwell, you might not have capacity to challenge that decision. <laughs> because the, the crocodile came from the river and the fish is for sure there. Right. So you can't go to the river and confirm. So you right. can only trust that. Yeah, that's true. If anybody from, you know, Parliament, who they have access to this documentation, they are the first, you know, line of Kenyans who look at the budgets, the reports, are giving us the finer details, which sometimes we struggle to get, and other than th through the press. I mean, the only time we get to know some of the details is when the media reports that there's a nine percent loan that has been taken. Otherwise, we do not have the benefit of the source documents, mm -hmm. which uh, Honorable Kioni and the colleagues would have access mm -hmm. to. So if Honorable Kion comes and tells us that government has been taking loans at 9% when there is an option of a loan, I mean a concession loan of 1%. I have no reason to doubt that. Because even if I were to move under to that 5 and seek documents to verify as a Kenyan, it's not going to be an easy job. I cannot even have a way to verify even what I'm being, will be given from the ministry is correct. Right. And I will be told there is, you know, national security issues, you cannot be given <coughs> documents. So we I have no choice as Kenyans that trust that what Korea is saying is true. Right. But if that were to be the case, then I think Parliament should be disbanded by now. I think somebody should be moving to, to uh, moving a motion in Parliament before it disbands itself to challenge. I mean, to seek that the president be you know declared to be a person unfit to hold office. Right. To you know for unconstitutional for constitutional reasons, mm -hmm. because you cannot lie to the people that have given you a mandate. You cannot govern the country in the way you imagine, because that is why we are an institutional system, why we have systems where we, we have a parliament that should be able to check the executive. What has been the problem, and probably why, why we would be seeing uh, Honorable Kuria saying it now. During the political times when you know, parliament was more political than politics itself, is that anybody in Jubilee was simply singing what the president says. Mm -hmm. It has been a rubber stamp. It, does, it, it never mattered. After the handshake, at least I've had members of parliament admit here it's that so they are now able to reason out. And probably now, Korea is coming out having, you know, become born again, pursuant to, <laughs> to, to, to the handshake. Mm -hmm. And it feels now I can speak. Wasira, that's a very interesting <laughs> uh, uh, spin being brought in because Korea is saying that Kenya chose to take expensive loans because um, who's, uh, who's, uh, chose uh, lenders such as uh, the, uh, to take expensive loans uh, because leaders such as World Bank, whose loans are affordable, have no room for corruption. Once a member of the budget committee in the House, a member of parliament, comes and says they went down this route very well knowing that the reason they're doing this is because there's room for kickbacks, shouldn't he lead from the front, resign and say, I can't deal in this house, I'm done. I failed uh, in my capacity and my mandate that you gave me in the house. Ideally, yes. But the way our politicians operate is uh, thousands of miles away from the ideal. One thing I would like to say is that uh, the levels of corruption in this country are not just uh, instigated by the political class, instigated and sustained by the political class is so high that economists tell us that about 30% of all the goods and services we produce is lost to corruption. 30% is uh, it's diabolical. It's horribly high. It's a path we do not want to go. But now that we are there, the question is, you see, you find yourself in a hole long before you start thinking about 
how you got there. You stop digging. Have we stopped digging? Mm -hmm. Do we have systems and structures that would enable us to, to get out of the morass we find ourselves in as a country? And, the, and I'll tell you for free, we do not have them. Or if we have them, they are not being used and implemented by the people who should be lead, leading us from that front. Right. Now, second, um, the political class, just like you've said, um, they have uh, this tendency during campaigns to tell us they are, they are leader servants. Is it servant leader or leader servants? Servant, servant leaders. There is something, there is a lie they tell us. <laughs> but once they are in office, one, we see very little of them. Two, the little we see of them is not useful interaction for them to be able to gauge and to know where the people want to go. It's not enough to take the people where you want the people to go. Where do the people want to go? Mm -hmm. Is this where we wanted to go five, 15 years ago? Yeah. In terms of the qualities of leadership, the levels of graft, are we where we wanted to go? Right. If, if not, what is the recourse of the ordinary person? You remember there was that recall clause that an MP, for instance, I think it was more about MPs for some reason or other, the recall clause, that if they don't do this, they don't do this, or they do this, within a certain period, a guy can gather so many signatures and have them recalled. I think we need stronger laws in that direction so that if you are a non-performer, we don't stomach your nonsense for five years. From that particular point, you need to go home. Pack your bags and go back home. Absolutely. <laughs> Soonest. And it's interesting because even as you talk about that, we'll shift gears slightly from matters national debt and bring it bound down to an individual level <laughs> to the interest rate caps. We had a meeting the other day in Mombasa with KEPSA. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what I liked about the KEPSA that we met this year was the honesty aspect of it. And they were clear in their mind that uh, even as we blame uh, they were not blaming politicians, unlike this panel. Do you feel you are being targeted? No, no, no. no, I, no, no as the, the truth way, is not blamed. You take, you, you take that position and you agree to be the dustbin, to take mm. in all that is said. Eh? You cannot be erected in Kenya with uh, any of that reservation. You have to be ready anywhere you go, you must take in. You but do you feel the said. allegations are unfair? Before that, before that uh, <laughs> what, what they were saying was this, and I thought they were being really honest. There is no project in government that is executed by government officials. All the projects are done by the private sector. And all the bribe is paid by the private sector. The public servant is a recipient of the money from the private sector. He may have helped the money to leave the executive to the private hands but it comes back to him from the private sector. So there is none in this country who should stand and throw stone to the other. And they were uh, all accolades on the, the fact that we now have passed a bribery law that deals with the giver and the taker at the same. Because unless we get ourselves to that point, we will talk about this corruption issue forever. Right. We must deal with the giver also. Right. Because if the money, for example, was borrowed for World Bank and it was left in the, in the banks, it were never left to go and do the projects, which are, which are implemented by the private sector, there will not be any stealing. So we must, even as we blame uh, politicians for the panel, executive for the, the, the KEPSA, we must also deal with the aspect of the giver. Right. That, 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 that is very important. Two, the other thing is this, and I think uh, if you cannot be honest with yourself, you know, you, you need to start with yourself before you go, you know, toa ile iko kwa machako kabla ya kwanza kusema wengine wako na shida. I personally had an opportunity to serve in some of the committees when they were being formed. And I said, I don't want to serve in that committee. Because if I serve in that committee, I don't think one, two, three. I want to serve in this other committee. So if you don't have that conscience, then you go and sit in a committee and all hell is, you know, things are so bad and they've been occasioned by your committee, you have no business to go and scream outside from the, across the road. You should start by resigning from the committee. Remain in parliament, but resign from just that committee and say, for these reasons, I want to resign from the committee. 
the documents that are tabled on the floor of the house. And last week, we had a whole day to tell Kenyans that parliament operates through committees. There is no time for I share a committee. And the documents that we receive from various agencies are so voluminous. We are the only people with the time to peruse through them and go, you know, with a tooth cob and say, this is not working. When you sit in a committee that then brings a report for us as members of parliament to take in, and we're dealing, we are dealing with an executive summary, you are dealing with the recommendations, and you have this number of minutes to even contribute on the floor, three, four, five minutes, and you have not taken that high, you know, pedestal, then I start by telling you that you are right. You're not being honest. So you don't think these allegations from Gatundo South are honest? I, I don't want to associate myself with them because after this, there will be another allegation. The next one will be Mogeki. The next one, will, I mean, this, you, if they had come from another mouth, I would be reading that article. <laughs> Jeff, just, a, just a, a, a small clarity on that matter. I think one of the uh, realizations that we have to note is that parliamentarians don't work in CBK, neither do they work in Treasury. Neither do they work in other government departments. They are members of parliament. Reports and audits have to be brought to them based on the queries that they pass. So the truth of the matter is that parliament is discussing things that are five years behind. No. Four I want years to tell behind you no. or whatever it is mm -hmm. that there is. You know you that is, no, no, allow me to cut Some of the, let him just, um, is yeah. that, is that no, allow me to The truth of the fact, the truth of the fact is that and, 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 and the honorable member will say, is that there's no opportunity to discuss daily dealings or weekly dealings or monthly dealings that could go wrong. And I pray that we'll get to a place that is, is, uh, uh, that's that way. There is nothing wrong with Moses Kuria being the former soul and now being a Paul. There's nothing wrong with being a bad guy, if so-called, if being a psychophant uh, in Jubilina is wrong, and now seeing the light and saying, there's a, there's a thing that is bothering you. Even if you go to committee, those guys will tell you the truth, I killed. Okay, you can't say you're wrong now there, because uh, you killed. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, to address that particular is that issue. We still are dealing with the old history, and we need to move on. And I have even told my colleagues at times, you find them make, uh, carrying out an argument based on the old constitution, not the new constitution. Mm. When you say we have five-year-old document, it's no longer the case. That's why we had a whole day last week mm. to tell Kenyans where we are. And even on issues or not, we are up to date. That is one thing. And it is important that you oblige yourself with the happenings in parliament. And this has been done by committees. Two is that, that we also must understand the role of parliament. It is oversight. It's not macro micromanaging. Exactly. We don't want to micromanage the executive. Mm. We don't want to ask them, where are you spending this money today? No, no, no. Mm. Ours is to oversight. They still have to spend. We can, during the process of arriving at a project, we can say this may not be the case. But one of the things that we must make sure that we also don't do is to micromanage the executive. Absolutely. We must be able to do oversight and we do it on time. And I want to tell you, mm. most, in, in fact not most, and that is why we say as this was initiated by us as chairs of various committees. And we said, a whole day, we will pay for airtime, let us tell Kenyans where we are. Mm -hmm. The committees made, gave some very, very useful reports. And I, 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 I hope we will have time, or people will have time to peruse them. Mm. On the what we are doing current, nothing in the history, nothing in the Goldenberg, Goldenberg agro uh, case where you are coming five years later. On the, on the, and the, even the county governments were also accusing parliament. You remember there was the issue of the 16 billion, 335, mm. and the issue was, oh, you haven't audited. The books have been brought to book. Everything was done, has been done to date, and that was by the direction from the, the speaker. Because it's also very clear as to what needs to be done. Mm. So it's not so much in the, in the history. And this is why I'm saying it's very, very scary when, when this happens. You know, you also read it as a member of parliament. Right. You read it coming from your colleague <laughs> from the newspaper telling you that we have destroyed Kenyans. I mean, this, this I can tell you, he has even to explain to parliament. This is irresponsible. 
You don't go to incite the public when you had a, an opportunity. It's like Uhuru going to Uhuru Park. He was in Safari Park the other day and saying, it's all done. You know, I, it, okay, and of course, height of the <laughs> the nation, we shall see how it has been dressed in the National Honestly, Assembly. Uh, we we'll have to move on um, <laughs> on that particular one. Right before we go to the break, I want to touch on matters, interest rate caps. Uh, I want to, take, uh, to get a feel on what you feel as far as this is concerned. Um, they say in, on page 9 of the standard, return of pricey loans as MPs ditch uh, rate caps. As we get to the break, uh, Dennis Anyoka, is this what uh, private sector needed, SMEs, in order to get this elusive uh, capital that they need? There's been arguments that it's a good thing that uh, we move away from controlling of the interest rates, putting a cap on it. Um, however, this can only be successful if we let the market compete for itself and remove government from really borrowing, so that then we are having a situation where it's about demand and supply, right. so that it can regulate itself, mm -hmm. so that if the demand is low, uh, people, you know, the, the, the interest rate can come down. If it's right. high, probably it will try to move up, but not so much, depending right. who wants it. But if you put a competitor like government borrowing from the same market and you say now you've removed it, then really it will not serve the purpose. Right. Um, uh, Washira, some people are saying that it's the same banks that got us into this scenario where we had to cap the rates. Mm. Why do we believe that this time around they've learned their lesson and will be more prudent in how they deal with their customers? There is no proper reason to believe that... Um, to borrow from him, the banks have moved from being uh, Saul to Powell, or that they have seen the light. Because in the first place, access to loans, especially by the SMEs and, and the micro enterprises, it, it was a very, very tricky and slippery affair because uh, the, the issue of collateral came in. And uh, the, if they are unable to access credit, how do they grow? You know, a minute ago, the, there was that argument that even the government needs to borrow in order to do certain things and to, to effect development projects, blah, 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 blah. So escalate that down to the person on the ground, uh, the, the entrepreneur, you know, the, the, the micro enterprises. How, how do they grow their businesses? How do they move from being entrepreneur to the next level if they have no access to credit? And access to credit is based on collateral. So we're back to where we started. I don't know whether we're moving forwards or backwards. Right. Yeah. So it's an issue where it's almost cyclical in nature. It's a chicken like and the egg type of scenario. Musical chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and right before we go into this break, because I think it's something Honorable Kioni can just uh, spell out once and for all. Do you ever feel there's interference by the executive in parliament? Because even in this scenario, Honorable Peter Kaluma, Honorable Jomo, saying that they were being asked to travel very suddenly so that uh, they couldn't be in the House for this particular uh, vote. They said that other members had been given that same uh, directive and this was coming from these powers that be in the executive. As we go into the break, do you yeah. feel that the executive yeah, powers sit into know, parliament? You no, know, Jeff, nobody will put you in a plane and tell you to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, uh, if you want to be in parliament to vote against it, you, you will be there. This, uh, again, those are necessary excuses being given by members of parliament. Uh, the problem lies elsewhere. And the problem lies in our constitution. When we pass the constitution and give the president veto power, we didn't get to think that the veto power would be used in the manner that is being used. And I, in the committee that I sit, we have proposed a constitution amendment to reduce the amount of the number of times the president can veto a legislative uh, item mm -hmm. done from parliament. And the proposal that we have is that we allow him to have at least two, or maybe a maximum of three. And it's upon him to, to, to see when can he use it. Mm -hmm. So that it is not on every piece of uh, act or every bill that goes to him that is vetoed. Because what does that mean? Then law is being made from state house as opposed from uh, parliament. Uh, parliament. And that is the issue that we need to address. Lazing two thirds is a real tall order. Mm -hmm. I can tell you it is a very, very tall order. It's something that we needed to keep it for those very fundamental amendments to the constitution and such. But I, I don't see, we have, we, we've not been able to overturn anything that has come back from the president. Right. And he now knows. And that is also why you go and campaign outside for your political party. So that you have people who can agree, support your agenda. And even if you have to have people to disagree with your agenda, uh, the number that is required to disagree with you on this particular one 
is an attainable. It's uh, when it uh, when I had that the memorandum is on the way back. Mm. You actually, knew it was done. I knew it's done. I knew it was done. Okay, we want your views on this as well, even as we come back after the break to talk about this particular issue with um, the rate cap uh, being removed. Is that good news for you as an SME owner, somebody looking for credit? Where does it stand uh, for you as well, as far as it's concerned? We want to get your feedback, as always, at K24 TV. Also, SMS us on 21222. We are back with that and plenty more after the break. <laughs>